Hey, hey, blushing brides. I am currently spending every single waking moment that I have on creating the Unveiled Bride Society. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. Uh, membership's going to include the Unveiled Ultimate Planner Workbook, the Be Your Own Wedding Planner e-course that walks you through the entire wedding planning process step by step, a community where you can discuss all things wedding with me and the other bride members, super valuable bonus content from me every single week, as well as exclusive vendor discounts and more. I am so excited about this. It's going to be the best. I can't wait to see you all there. So since I'm focusing on all of my energy on that this week, I'm going to post a replay. So even if you've already seen that, I would recommend watching it again. I think that there's lots of helpful information in there. Be sure that you go grab your Unveiled Ultimate Planner because I'll be sending everyone who purchases their planner a free month of the Unveiled Bride Society. I am so excited for all of this. This is going to be so much fun and I can't wait to see all you girls there. A lot of times couples kind of just start spending and hoping that it's going to be okay. But this is definitely a recipe for disaster. Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Kyle James, and today we are talking about the wedding budget. By the end of this video, you will know exactly how much you can spend on your wedding and how to break out that total budget into the different categories. A lot of couples tend to ignore their budget because maybe they're worried about how much they're going to spend or they don't think they have enough to spend, so they're just kind of ignoring it and hoping it works out. That makes it so much more stressful than just sitting down and figuring out how much you actually have to spend. So let's dive right in. First, let's talk about how to get to your total budget. The first question to ask yourself when talking about your wedding budget is how much do we want to spend? Not how much should we spend or how much is a good amount. That has nothing to do with you. You need to figure out actually how much you feel comfortable spending on your wedding day. The average wedding in the United States costs twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars. That is a lot of money to spend on one day. So if you're not comfortable with that, that is totally okay. Don't feel pressured to spend more than you feel comfortable with because then the rest of your process is going to be stressful. You're going to want to make a list like this one of who is going to be contributing. I do have the link for this free download listed below, but be sure that you watch the rest of this video before you do that so that you can get all the information before you start working on your budget. There's a few key tips that you definitely don't want to miss. So I would just watch through once and then print off the download and then maybe watch through again when you're actually going through and breaking down your budget. So the first number that you need to figure out is how much you and your fiance are going to put in. For this example, let's say you're going to do 12,000. There is a huge catch on having your family contribute to your wedding budget. So be sure that you listen to this. Whoever contributes to your wedding budget is going to feel like they have a say in your wedding day. If they're paying for most of your wedding day, they might want to have a say in what it looks like. They might want to have a say in the guest list. Usually they want to say in the guest list. And they might want just to be very hands-on in the planning process. So before you accept any contributions to your wedding budget, be sure that you lay out the expectations that come along with accepting any money. So sit down with your family members, whoever you think will want to contribute. Um, maybe tell them how much you're contributing, how much you are, your goal budget is, and then ask them how much they would feel comfortable contributing and what their expectations would be around their involvement in the planning process if they do contribute. In this example, we'll say the bride's parents are going to contribute 10,000, the groom's parents 5,000, and let's say you have some grandparents who want to do 3,000. So once you've written out all of the people who are contributing and how much, then we can add those together. In this example, our total wedding budget will be 30,000. If that total number is a little bit lower than you are wanting, then it's obviously going to fall on you and your fiance to contribute more money to your budget. I highly suggest 
to not get into a ton of debt for your wedding day. The divorce rate in this country is extremely high and the top reason for divorce is finances. So I think that starting your marriage out in a bunch of debt that you don't feel totally comfortable with um, is not a great start to the rest of your life. <laughs> So there's definitely other ways you can earn money. One option for saving up a little bit extra is maybe to push your wedding day out so that you have a little bit longer to save up. It's totally up to you to decide if you, if it's more important to you to get married sooner and spend less or maybe push your date out and so that you can spend more. So once you have your total wedding budget, then you need to break it down and allocate specific amounts to each category. What I suggest doing is going through with your budget and writing out the dollar amount for each category and then going back through and adjusting based on things that are more important to you. So if you need a little math refresher <laughs> to figure it out, we're gonna do our budget, which in this example is $30,000 and we're gonna take that times 0 0.05 to get 5%. So it's going to be 1,500. And then we'll just go through and do the same thing for each of the percentages. And then you'll wanna go through and add up all of those dollar figures just to double check your math and make sure that you end up at your total budget. I'll include a link to this free worksheet below so that you can go through and actually put your specific numbers in there and figure out what your breakdowns are. And once you've double checked your math, then you can go through and look at the dollar figures and decide if you want to make any adjustments. So let's say you know that you're gonna spend way more than like $2,500 on your dress. You are gonna do a cheaper DJ, so we can take $1,000 out of there. So we'll mark that out take a thousand out and move a thousand up to bride attire. The only category that I suggest that you leave alone is the miscellaneous category. You definitely want to have money set aside for unexpected expenses um, or maybe you fall totally in love with something and you can dip into that bucket. So be sure that you leave that alone when you're making your adjustments. You can see here with a $30,000 budget, which is pretty big, that actually doesn't give us a ton of money in each category. I feel like a lot of girls with a $30,000 budget go and book like a $10,000 venue um, and then completely blow that budget and that's how it kind of ends up snowballing and you end up spending $60,000 when you've meant to spend $30,000. On the worksheet I gave you, this actually has two pages. So this first page of the budget allocation is kind of like just um, a place for you to work out your numbers so you can make it really messy. And then I gave you a second page once you get it all figured out to write out your final budget so that you have a pretty copy of this for, to actually work from. You'll also notice that in the worksheet download I give you, there are a bunch of pages at the end with each category broken down into specific expenses. Right now you don't need to go through and break down your budget into every little specific thing that can be totally overwhelming, but it is important that you break it down into each category now so that you can kind of figure out how much you have to spend. And then when it comes time to work on that category to book the vendor or start shopping for dresses or whatever, then you can go through and break down each category into specific expenses. The next step is to track and adjust as you go. So writing your budget out this one time and then completely ignoring it for the rest of your process is not going to help you. <laughs> You need to look back at this budget every single time you're going to meet with a vendor or go shopping or whatever. Be sure that you are checking back on this budget, seeing how much you've spent and seeing how much you have left to spend. And then this running total column here on the side is where you'll write down what you actually spent and then you can do the math and figure out how much budget you have remaining or how much extra you used that you need to pull from somewhere else. A secret little tip that I have for you on staying in your budget for each vendor is when you are going to meet with the vendor, tell them that your budget is 10% less than it actually is. For example, when you're dress shopping, if you tell them your budget is $2,000, 
then they're probably going to start pulling $2,000 dresses for you and not take into account the alterations and all that stuff. If you give them a little bit lower of a number, that gives you some wiggle room and you'll probably end up at your actual budget. This goes for any of your vendors. There ends up being so many little extra fees, service fees and tips and stuff like that that get added in after the fact and it ends up blowing your budget out of the water if you don't account for these upfront. If you stay on top of your budget throughout your wedding planning process, that's just one less thing to stress about, which is exactly what you need, as little stress as possible. So I highly, highly suggest really paying attention to your budget. And then once you have your wedding budget figured out, now is an excellent time to sit down and start figuring out your life budget with your fiance. I think it's super important to start talking about finances and what you want your household finances to look like together before the wedding. I am going to do a video with my husband actually on how we combined our finances and our suggestions for doing that. I think we have a really great system and we're super excited to share that with you guys. So be sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And that's all I have for you today. If this video was helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. Also be sure that you grab that free budget worksheet download. It will help you so much. And then make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. Videos. We'll see you next time. Happy planning! I watch you as you drive. Do you know I'm looking? And I can't help but smile. Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on. I put my feet up. And we just sing along. Just loving this moment Can we stay here forever?